All right. So, all right, everybody. So my name is Stephen J. Gaither. I'm the founder of HBCU Game Day and uh, special, we got very special guests today. Um, we got not one, not two, not three, but soon to be four pro athletes, NFL players, all from one historically black college, Tennessee State University. All right. So look, it's getting to it. It's been a hot topic about HBCUs all over. So we're going to talk to some guys who actually went to HBCUs and have actually made it from HBCUs to get to that higher level. We're going to talk about what their journey was like at their, uh, to get to their alma mater, Tennessee State, and uh, what it's been like to get to the NFL and, and paving the way for the next generation and, and building on what's already been there. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and get started. And, uh, and uh, we'll interview interview everybody, introduce everybody. Uh, first off, we have a two-time Super Bowl champion. He got one with the Packers. He got one with the Ravens. He wants some more. To safety, Anthony Levine. Anthony, congratulations uh, on everything you're doing. And welcome to the, uh, welcome to the show. Man, I appreciate it, man. You know, uh, I'm, ha I'm happy to be here, man, you know, doing this and, uh, you know, just trying to keep it going, keep stacking it. All right, all right. Yes, sir. Definitely. We got a lot to talk to you about to you. So that's the veteran. We got two of the two of the rookies, the, the up and comers, uh, the the guys who just took the TSU off of their jerseys and are getting ready to go into their first NFL camps really soon. Uh, we'll start with uh, off we'll start with the offensive lineman. The linemen never get enough love. So I'm gonna make sure that we well, man. Love to the old line. <laughs> we got Lachavia Simmons. Uh, he is a member of the Chicago Bears. He was the first uh, HBCU player selected in the NFL draft this year. Uh, he's going to go to a storied franchise. He's got a storied uh, history of great running backs, including an HBCU guy. Uh, Mr. Simmons, how are you feeling today? Man, I'm feeling amazing, man. Just glad to be here. And we got to keep this HBCU thing going, man. No doubt, no doubt. And, uh, and then we've got uh, this young man right here. Uh, he is uh, a member of the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, he, uh, he is a dynamite, do-everything player. He can run the ball out of the backfield. He can catch. He can return kicks. He can do everything. He did a little bit of everything in Nashville for TSU. And if you don't know, this man broke records from not just any receiver, not just Tennessee State records, but the receiver's record from Jerry Rice of Mississippi Valley State University, single season uh, reception record, uh, and it was just havoc on the field. Chris, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing good, man. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to be on the show, man. I'm just excited about the things to come, just ready to get things going. Yeah, we appreciate, uh, we appreciate having you guys uh, having all you guys on here, uh, and uh, shortly we'll have another guest. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, just talk a little. We're just going to talk a little bit about it. So again, um, all all three of these gentlemen uh, played their college football, uh, matriculated at Tennessee State University. Now in the HBCU world, TSU kind of has stood alone for a long time, in that they're not in a conference with other historically black colleges and universities. So it's only fitting that we start with. Uh, the school that stands out a lot because they have a great history of, uh, of talent that goes back a long way. Um, we'll just start with each of the guys um, really quickly. How did you, uh, how did you get to TSU? Um, we'll start Man, uh, it's actually how I got to TSU. Um, coach James Wester, he was recruiting me when he was working at a uh, best team's coach at uh, University of North Carolina. So uh, I was – you know, um, I didn't know where I was going yet, and I had like a lot of uh, I had a lot of scholarship offers, and uh, all of a sudden, man, you know, uh, I had my SAT and all that, you know, they they fall through, and then Coach Well get the get the head coaching job at Tennessee State, and then uh, he calls me and asks me if I still want to play ball, and I'm like, yeah, sir. He's like, well, come to Tennessee State, and I'm like, all right, now, you know, I, I come, I just want to play football, right, and. Um, I think, man, it's the, it's the best decision that, that I ever made. And uh, if I could do it all over again, I'll do the exact same thing. I'll, I'll go to uh, Tennessee State. No doubt. Now, I see that you're originally from Louisiana, but I see you went to college. Or you went to high school in Winston-Salem. Uh, yeah. So when I, when I looked at that, I was like, man, why did he end up at my alma mater at WSSU? But, you know, it's all good. Look, you, wait, you made it to an HBCU. Hey, you know what? 
every time I see um, – I can't think of his name right now. But every time I see him, the, he was a coach at the time at West Salem State. I always get him. And I was like, man, you ain't recruit me. You ain't, you ain't want me. You know what I'm saying? But – uh, it, know, man, it was it was rough days, but it, obviously things paid off for you over there in Nashville. Yeah. Um, so we'll go over uh, to Mr. Simmons. How did you end up at TSU? Uh, I ended up TSU because of Russ Ernfield, uh, my offensive line coach. My mm -hmm. coach, he used to come down to uh, sell my just about every week, and he he's the one who changed my position because a lot of people don't know I played defensive line in high school. Okay, and he came in one day and he seen how long my arms was. And he was like, "Man, you need to play tackle." Right. And like just just knowing his resume and like just all the guys he had put in the league, like I just I just trusted him and I came on up and it was like it was the best decision I ever made. Like it's it's a lot of things you can get at TSU like you can get at a normal school. Like you learn a lot of life lessons at TSU, like that can prepare you for like later on in life. And like I'm just just proud to be a big blue alumni. All right. And Mr. Rowland, talk, uh, I, I talked to you about this a couple of months ago back at the uh, Celebration Bowl before that when you were up for the Black College Football uh, Player of the Year. But talk to us about how you got to TSU. Um, I understand you had – there's some legacy involved with you. Yeah, man, my whole family <laughs> done been to TSU and went there and, you know, walked that campus. So it wasn't when – you know, I wasn't heavily recruited out of high school uh, also. So – that was, it wasn't really like, you know, a hard choice, but, you know, Tennessee State was one of the schools I always wanted to go to. So, you know, when they extended the official offer, it was, it was kind of a no brand. You know, everybody expected me, you know, you got an offer from, you know, UT Martin to TSU, you know, which one are you going to choose? It's kind of obvious. So when I, I officially, you know, received the offer after the season and I committed by January and it was a done deal and it's, you know, without a doubt the best decision I've ever made because, you know, originally I, I, I was, went to a predominantly white high school and I wasn't, sure what I was you know going to an HBCU and just being around the culture and just getting a feel and being around um that atmosphere is just something that you know I wouldn't, wouldn't trade for the world and to get that experience I think is very much needed for anybody really just people coming from different you know walks of life you know and it's not just you know for black folk but it's just so much culture at a, you know a historically black college so I'm grateful for you know the opportunity I got to attend Tennessee State and just you know carry on the tradition that my family has. Right, right. right. You, you think tradition, tradition is obviously a big thing at all HBCUs, but especially TSU. I think you guys have had it over 100 guys drafted into the NFL. You got Hall of Famers um, on, on, in pretty much every position. Um, when did you guys, uh, especially for Anthony and, uh, and, and Lachavius, when did you guys realize that, like, man, like, this isn't just any school or any HBCU, like, this really is something they really produce pro athletes from this school. I mean, for, for me personally, when I first got, when I first get to Tennessee State, you, you see the 1999, the 2000, you, you see, uh, you see, uh, Ed Tutal Jones, you see Richard Dent, you see all those guys on the wall, uh, uh, uh Mr. Gilliam, you see all these hall of fame, uh, players and, and it's like, it may make you want to do your research. So you start you start looking up looking up these guys and then you start hearing about them. It's just a tradition. So everybody, as soon as you get on Coach Mo, see everybody don't know about Coach Mo now. Coach Mo, old trick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Coach Mo, he he let you know, you know, and uh, so once you get that man, it, it instantly become a family. So you start you start hearing about these guys and and you start just like you start embracing, you start embracing that, you know. But then once you start embracing that, that's when I met this guy. And hopefully he'll get on soon. Dominique Rogers Cromati. And when I seen him, it was a it was an eye opener. Like I never seen somebody that can get up up and down the football field as fast as he can. I'm talking about it was just I was just I was blown away. I'm like, oh man, this this is crazy. Cause you know when I when I played ball in high school, it was just like you know whatever you know I could I could go up and down whenever I could do whatever right. I wanted. Right. Then when I seen him, right. it was just like I had to take my skills to a whole different level because he was just he was different. Like he was different. So if you if you wanted to be on the field with Dominique, you had to you had to raise your game up. So um, yeah, so seeing him and then having all that tradition, man, you have all those guys, uh, especially that that you know the, those all OVC teams and the teams that won all the championships and all that, man, it's just uh, it's it's a great tradition. Even from back back in the day, 
if you if you look at if you look at back in the day and all, all the teams in the NFL that won all these championships, more than likely it was guys from Tennessee State that was on that football team. You know, you look at uh, uh, the Chicago Bears. You know, they won a championship with Richard Dent. Um, MVP. Uh, John, like, no, Andrew John Jones was in uh, the Cowboys. Like, see what I'm saying? Like, first overall pick, I think. Yeah, first overall yeah. pick. Is it? You know what I'm saying? Tradition at Tennessee State is just is just crazy. Matter of fact, uh, uh, is it uh Joe Gilliam, uh, uh Jefferson Street, uh, who who was uh, uh Jefferson you know, Street Joe? Yeah, he was on. Uh, was he the one that uh that was playing in front of Bradshaw? Mm-hmm. At yep. Pittsburgh. Yep. See, people don't know that. And then he got all of he get he get Pittsburgh Steelers all the way to the Super Bowl, right. and then they bench him and put Bradshaw. In the game, you know what I'm saying? See, I learned that at Tennessee State. I ain't, I ain't know that. I learned that at TSU. Right, right. Achavius? Like oh. you said, um, the now tradition, that, man. Hey, look, Uh-oh, that's, cool up in here. that's the milk. That's the living legend right there now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. O <Ooh> himself. <laughs> okay. But um, pretty much, I, I, I figured about all the tradition when I came on my official visit. Like I ain't, I ain't realize like all those guys that came from Tennessee State until like when I got down my visit and they had gave us a pamphlet and then I seen Dominique name on there. I was like, I heard this dude before. And then Richard Dent, um, um, and all the just all the legends that came through there, and like it was just amazing, just like to be a part of the institution. And then like the first time I got there in boot camp, and like just. Just the spirit everybody had on campus, and like we just had a good time, and just like everybody was just like a big old family, and it's just a, it was just an amazing experience, man, just to be a part of that campus like for, for five years, and like like you said, I wouldn't I wouldn't take it back for nothing. Like if I can do it all over again, I'll do it. Go right back to TSU, and like I didn't I didn't have some friendships and all kind of things like that's gonna last a lifetime. Like I like my best friend. He was my roommate for all four four years, and I never knew I was gonna meet him. He came from Miami, Florida, and I didn't end up adapting some of his culture, like listening to all their music and everything. So it's a lot of stuff that comes with it, and I'm just glad to be a part of Big Blue Nation, man. No doubt, and no doubt, and uh, you know we talked a little bit about it with Chris as he's as he's settling in here. We've got we've got another gentleman that's just entered the chat. Give you a little bit about him. He is. Uh, for the long time, he was an answer to a trivia question. He was the last HBCU player to get picked in the first round for over a decade and uh, until uh, Alabama State's offensive lineman was picked uh, just uh, last year. But uh, Dominique Rogers cromarty a two-time Pro Bowler, uh, All-Pro, uh, FCS, All-American. Um, hey, it's it's great to have you on to join in. Uh, we're just talking with the talking with the guys about um you know about how they got to TSU. They gave us their stories a little bit. Tell us, uh, give us a little bit of your story. What's up, baby? Uh, I, first and foremost, I like to thank you for having me on the show. You dig? This, this your boy, Mister. It's the boy, Mister. Ooh himself. You know what I mean? Uh, I think my route to Tennessee State, man, it was uh, I got there by all pure faith, man. You know, and uh, all connections because I went to five different high schools. You know, I didn't have no scholarships coming out. And uh, my dad and Coach Reed at the time, I mean, back in the day when I was a kid, they were both coaching at Bethune Cookman. So I always had that relationship with Coach Reed. He always been like an uncle of mine. And when the time came around, man, I didn't have, like I said, I didn't have no scholarships. And uh, my dad reached out to him. And he was like, hey, man, my, my, they're sleeping on my son. My son can really play. Just give him an opportunity. And I'll never forget Coach Reed came down and, watched me in the all-star game and, and he bought me up on a visit, man. And I, and I came in and they took me to a basketball game and I was locked in from them. You know what I mean? That was my type of atmosphere. That was my type of culture, you know, and I, uh, I ain't think twice. I signed on the first, first, first chance I, I committed right then and there. So don't come in, man. I just went there with the mindset, man, I got four years to change my life. And if it don't happen, see, I'm back, I'm back at home with that vibe. So, you know, I just, I just always kept that mindset and I never let nothing, interfere with what I really wanted to do, and I was go to the league, you know what I mean? I know when you go to a black college, man, you got to be mindful of uh, all the partying and stuff like that, because it, 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 gonna, it gonna go down, but you got to have that much focus, man. And, and as much as I parted, I was just that focused, you, you know what I mean? And I, and, I, and I my grind, I was really about my grind, and couldn't nobody tell me nothing about me, and I just kept that mindset, no matter what I went through, bro, I was goddamn, gonna, I was gonna make it. 
Right, and right. I had, guys, I had some young guys come behind me that had that kind of that same mindset. So that that really kept me on the on the path. You, you know, I had a lot of guys looking up to me, and I was like, you know what I mean? She, let's do so. And, and from since I've been drafted, me and come to Veen, Booby. I mean, a lot of people, man. It just the history just keep repeating itself, man. And and that's what you want to see, man. You want to see your hard work really work for for stuff like that, man. So that that's why I do it, man. That's why I'm continuing to still do it, man. I'm going on 13 years. They're gonna have to roll me out that bit. You know what I mean? I feel you. I feel you. Well, look, we're talking about uh, we're talking about the legacy of TSU, producing uh, legendary players all the way back to when to to you to after you and the guys that are coming after you. We are also talking a little bit too, you know, in the HBCU world. A lot of times, for those of us who follow HBCU football, we see you guys in the first in the first part of the season. You play in this in the classics against some of the HBCUs, and then you guys go off into the OVC. So sometimes you guys, uh, sometimes you guys kind of, you know, sometimes you guys kind of get forgotten a little bit. But who um, out of the teams you guys play every year? Play, play uh, in the classics in the HBCUs. Which school did you guys enjoy competing with against most, or which rivalry was, uh, which rivalry got you got got up got got you guys up the most? Uh, for me, it was it was two teams. It was Jackson State and uh, FAMU. Uh, those, those two games was was the games that really that re- like the end that that like my junior and senior went up playing uh Southern. And I I got up for that game too, but it was really I got up for all the games, but really uh, that Jackson State uh, in uh, Memphis and that FAMU in Atlanta, those those two right there, that's yo, them the ones. Any other guys? Anybody? Any other? I, I said Jackson State and Bethune. Like man, just can't forget about Bethune when we went down there. Like it was that was probably one of the best games. Like we. Like the best is HBCU experience like I've had since I've been to college. Like it was lit. We stayed on the beach and like it was it was just it was just amazing, man. Oh, y'all got rich when we love. No man, we stayed on the beach, bro. Like, and like, we, we had an early game. Don't know about that one. We had an early <laughs> game. Coach Reed won that down next day on the beach. And we <laughs> and we stayed overnight. <laughs> and y'all stayed. Hold on, y'all, y'all stayed after y'all won the game. Yes. <laughs> Oh, boy, you already know. <laughs> Man, I <laughs> plan to leave till five a.m. the next day. <laughs> now, I'm from Florida, so so uh, was it? Was it? Did you enjoy playing against any of the Florida teams? Did you guys get a chance to play against any of them? You talking about me? Yeah. But you know, me and Levine like the same age, right? Right, right, right. First of all, first of all, <laughs> first of all nah, I'm just saying. Talking about, I need mean, I get a play. Yeah, yeah. Nah, you know my favorite HBC is it is gonna always be fam you. You know what I mean? Just because I know a lot of guys on mm-hmm. their sideline. And, right. that, and being from Florida, you always have that 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 talk. You know, we 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 talk to the guys. You know, we we gonna talk that crap. So I that game there, I'm always hyped for. But even though it was a Florida thing, it ain't nothing like Memphis, man. Ain't nothing like that Jackson State game, man. So that, that I really like Jackson State, but I'm a Florida boy, so I got to go to at fam you, but it ain't nothing like that, ain't nothing like that Memphis game, man. Right, right. And obviously, um, you know, again, we talked about how TSU has had great players throughout history, but what what specifically do you guys think you got at TSU that helped you guys prepare explicitly for the next level um to make you guys stand out as as FCS or small school players or whatever? What 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 do you why do you think you guys continue to have that that be a pro factory, really? Um, it was first of all, it was we we got we got a crazy work ethic, the brotherhood and like it, it you can't really describe it. It's like no no matter what, like when, once you get to the league, it's like you have everything at your disposal. I'm talking about anytime I can go every single day and get brand new cleats. I can go in the in the equipment room and I can get whatever. I can go in the training room if I'm hurting. You know what I'm saying? It was none of that. Nah, <laughs> listen. Now, at, at, when you when you go into a school, you know that, that don't have like all of that. That gets you ready for to be able to go through those those those, those grind days of training camp. When when you get to those grind days of training camp and guys pulling hamstrings and they don't want to go out there no more, or, you know they they hurt they they hurt their little baby shoulder, you know, and they ain't trying to see what none of that at Tennessee State. If you was hurt or not, Coach Reed, Coach Will, take man, put some dirt on that man. Keep going. And that right there, that's what propelled my career because it's guys that 
You know, they get like a little eight. They want to go in the training room. It wasn't none of that Tennessee State. You could not do that. And and then, like, and plus, our brotherhood wouldn't let us do that. If, <laughs> if somebody got kicked off, if somebody got kicked off, off of practice or got kicked off the team, Oh, we all not going to practice, no, like not. We oh. ain't practicing until he come back. The whole boycott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like that's yeah. how we like. We not, we not moving until he come back. And that that brotherhood, like we don't. It was never, it was never leave a man behind. I'm talking about no, no matter if you if you wasn't the best player. I mean, I I mean we we didn't got into a lot a lot of arguments over over a lot of things, man. But at the end of the day, our brotherhood is is is, is what kept us. Um, together, man. I when I when I heard about Chris Rowland, that's all I kept hearing about Chris Rowland, Chris Rowland. And I wasn't able to, to come back to a lot of games, but I'm like, I gotta come back and see this dude play. Like, everybody keep telling me about him. I gotta get back to see him play. So when I get back, you know, and uh, man, everybody's done. Man, this boy brought out a lot of people now. Richard Dent, Robert Coverton, all everybody out there to watch him play, you know. And uh, but that that's the brotherhood, and that and and once and once you're able to to go to the next level. All, all those growing pains that, that you got at that you got at Tennessee State, when you get them in the next level, oh that's that's like, oh that's it, like that's that that's 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 all we gotta that, that that's that's the only thing we gotta go through, like that's it. And they're like, yeah, that's it. And I'm like, oh man, that's easy. I went the rest of that at Tennessee State. I didn't like they like they when when you when you go in to Tennessee State for four years, it's a grind, and it really makes you it makes you a man. Like you, you walk, you you walk into you walk into in in the Tennessee State, you know, as 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 a young man, and you walk out as a grown man, and can't nobody and can't nobody take that from you. Yeah, for real. No doubt. Anybody else want to anybody else want to speak on that? Uh, Chris, uh, Chris, and Latavius, you guys just went through it very recently, um, and obviously it was re- it, you know the the pre draft stuff was different for you guys because of the COVID nineteen, but just talk about. Um, you know some of the some of the things that uh you know some of the things that helped you get to where you are um to where now you're right on the cusp of your rookie season. Uh, like Levine's, well, go ahead, Chris. I said like Levine's, I mean it's it's hard to explain, but it's like it's a different culture. It's, it's just a it's a grind, and you know like you said, you got people coming back. And one guy came back I me mean, after my freshman year. He reached out to me. His name is Riley Howard. And, you know he told me I had a chance. You know if I could keep doing what I'm doing you know, and spend a little time working harder on some of my crap, I have a chance to play at the next level. And so when he was a former, he, you know, he played with, you know, Levine and uh, Dominique back in, you know, and they defensive back. And he came back, you know, he trained me these past four years and got me ready. And then, like you said, it's nothing but a grind. You just got to work. And, you know, we don't have the luxuries of having, you know, two and three and four pairs of cleats and gloves and stuff. But that, the thing is, though, you don't need that. It's humbling to the fact that, you know, when you get to the next level, you know, you, you can have that stuff. But, you know, when you're there, you're like, I don't really need that. You know, I see guys asking for multiple things. It's like, man, I just need one or two, and I'm good to go, man. Because, you know, I played a whole – my freshman my freshman sophomore year, I played a whole season with one pair of gloves and cleats. Mm-hmm. One pair out there, I was All-American both years. So, like, it's just a grind. You know, all that other stuff, you know, you don't need that. But that's the thing, just going back to, tradi- like, tradition and stuff like that. And you see guys – you know, that have come in and done it before you drafted, you know, like Dominique, he was drafted in the first round, you know, Levine, you know, he went, in, uh, you know, undrafted free agent, you know, like me. So like, there's all, you know, types of, you know, routes that guys have come through Tennessee state and had, and, you know, I'm just humble to be, like I said, no matter what happened, like when we went through at Tennessee state, I'm just humble for the experience that I, I couldn't trade it for the world. Cause like I said, it got me ready at the end of the day and I don't need all those luxuries at the end of the day, because I know what I can do and I know what I need to get there, so. Yes, sir. All right. And DRC, uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, about what it was like for you uh, coming from, you know, again, a smaller school and getting to be a first-round draft pick was a very big deal. Did you feel like, you know, were there, to- were there, were there times, now, or maybe now that you look back on it, did you feel like, there was a lot of weight put on you or a lot of, or, or feel like, you know, you were carrying more than just, just your, just yourself as you mm. went throughout your career. No, I, I, I want to say I, I never felt no pressure. Like how I got to represent for the black colleges and hold it down for the small. Nah, I, you don't want to clutter, clutter your mind with all that type of stuff, man. You got to stay as focused as you possibly can, man. So to put 
that kind of stuff on your every 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 weight is not meant for you to carry. You, you know what I mean? I think uh, just looking back, the only thing I thought, man, is if they give me an opportunity, they're going to understand that talent's anywhere, no matter where you at. And uh, I was blessed to go to the senior bowl and, and the combine, and, man, I, I just took advantage of it. You know, uh, I heard all the rumors of me not playing the talent, and I, I, never, I never let that do anything to me except make me madder. And that was, you don't want to do that. You don't want to make me mad. So I, I just, it just fueled my fire. And then I always had a tip on my shoulder. To this day, I always got a tip on my shoulder. Like, if you don't know nothing about me, if, I'm always screaming black college. And every, in every meeting, uh, whenever I make a play, I always say that. I, I can't, I, when I'm playing somebody else from another black school, I, I get fired up, I get crunk. Because, man, it's, I know the hardship that they went through. I know the knocks that they had on them. And just to get here and to be able to play at the highest level, Man, it's a blessing, man, and and I don't, I don't take that lightly. I told them, but people t they'll tell you, cut me, I be blue. That's all I talk about. You know what I mean? I don't get back as much as I could, cause you know we always doing the season and stuff. But every chance I get, man, I try to go. So when I'm, I mean, I was injured. I went to homecoming. You know what I mean? I'm supposed to be rehabbing. Now. I'm sliding, coach. But I'm telling you, man, it, it's it's a real grind, bro. And that's why anybody that make it. I mean, I, I salute you because I know it's a real grind, but you got to be dedicated. You got to be focused, and, and, it, and it's going to be hard. But, like, as long as you believe in yourself, man, you ain't got to worry about nothing. And I, I believe in me. No doubt, no doubt. So we got a question um, for anybody who wants to answer. Um, how did you all get noticed by the NFL, and how were you able to focus on and off the field? Um, so, um, you know, yeah, I guess that's, you know, it goes back to what uh, uh, Dominique was just saying. What? What are the things that how do you how are you guys able to focus and maintain your focus um, with everything that goes on outside of football to stay focused to continue to to work on your craft to to stay on top? Yeah, I'll, I'll say this, right? So I remember um, we we have a uh, six a.m. workouts, right? And as, as we walking out, as, as we walking up to the building, <laughs> we going up and. Um, I just hear, I just hear like, I hear, ah, shh, shh, shh. I hear that. And I was like, man, what, what's that on the side of the building? Like, what, what the heck going on on the side of the building, right? Now this, we about to go into our 6 a.m. workout, which mean they about to, I'm talking about runners, I'm talking about runners till we can't run no more, then we gotta go to class, right? So we, it's a big hill on side of, on side of Gentry. And you know, everybody been on that hill on side of Gentry. Going now, tomorrow. This is before our 6 a.m. workout. And everybody want to want to know why Dominique went first round. See that one thing about Dominique. Dom, Dominique don't like to talk about. He'll say it, but if if if, if you don't if you don't know Dominique, you'll think that you know what I'm saying that he don't he don't do certain things. But as I go look over to the hill and I see Dominique, he's running up and down the hill before I six a.m. workouts. I'm talking about getting, and I'm like, oh, what are you doing? You know we about to go run. He's like, yeah, but yeah, but like, yo, I gotta get it. I'm like, shit, all right, you know, and then I go in, you know, we get ready, and then he walk in, he drenched, he drenched, sweat, tired, and then he come in and do the whole workout. And I'm just like, yo, I don't know how he do it. I seen, I seen, I seen this man, he coach, our coach didn't want him to, to run the track meet. So our coach played him in the whole game of our spring game. <laughs> Left the spring game, Went straight to the went straight to the track and won every event that he was in, and people wonder why he was he went first round, and it was like that that right there was motivation. And you want to talk about being focused? That's how you be focused, and that's and that and that's and that and that was Dominique, and that is Dominique. So when they when, when people say you know you you give somebody flowers, you give somebody flowers when they when they allow. And Dominique, man, he's been nothing but motivation. I thought I can go to the league, but I never really talked about it. I was like, ah, you know, whatever happens, happens, right? He come back after his first year, and he just like, hey, man, you can play in this league. And I'm like, for real? He's like, man, some of these people are sorry, man. <laughs> like, you, I'm telling you, like, you better than a lot of these boys. I'm telling you, man, you can play in the league. So I'm like, all right, all right, bet. He, he offered to, to pay for my training, to send me anywhere I wanted to go. He's like, well, anywhere you want to go, I'll pay for you to go train. And I'm like, Nah, bro, I'm good. He's like, no, 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 for real. Where if you want to go, bro, I'll pay for you to go train. And I'm like, nah, bro, I'm good. But like, yeah, you ain't got to do that. He was like, he's like, look, man, you can do it. I'm telling you, you can do it. You know, and when I, again, when I talk about their brotherhood, that's, that's what it is. 
You know, like we always push each other. We always ground for each other. Like when I, when, I, when I see workouts and I see Chris Rowland doing something, because in Baltimore now, I'm, I'm the, I'm the, I'm, they call me the special teams ace. Like I'm, I'm running down on kickoff punt. I'm ready, you know what I mean? Get something, you feel me? When I see him, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a specialist. He's a kick returner, punt returner. If I see something that he, that, that he doing on film, and I see, you know, what they, what they post it, I'll tell him. I'll, I'll, I'll hit Riley up, like, look, tell Chris Rowland this. Tell him that he got to do this. Because I'm looking at that when I'm running downfield. Because if I run downfield, he do that. I'm telling you. I'm going to give him, him what he's looking for. You know what I'm saying? But that, that's that brotherhood. And, and to stay focused, man, you got, you got to know what you want. You got to know what you want. Like, again, like Dominique said, you know, yeah, you got you have fun. Listen, I didn't see, again, I seen Dominique come back. Sleep I, I, after a track meet. Sleep, come hang out. The next morning, he back working out again. Like he, like he don't stop. He didn't stop. Even now, I'm watching him. He just did a. Did you just do like a seven on seven? I'm like, bro, like yeah. on seven on sevens. Like what? Like I'm not. Like like come on. Like like he don't stop, man. So if it's something that you want, when you when you, when you coming from when you coming from a black college, it it, it is stigma. And you know they yeah. they look at you different. But at the end of the day. If you got that dog, you got that dog. And I'll never and I wouldn't trade that for no for, 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 for nothing. You know what I'm saying? And whatever, whatever, whatever we want to do at Tennessee State, we did it. You know, yeah. we always had each other back. A lot of these guys now are starting to come out. And now they're starting to say, oh man, well, my, my school was racist. Oh man, oh they're not, they they not welcome back at their school and all that. Nah, man, it was never never like that, you know, at at, uh, at, at Tennessee State. Always welcome back, always love. I yeah. show sure don't nobody know. As soon as I get there, whatever. Like it's just, it's like that, you know. But to stay focused, man, is is all is all about you, you know. It's all, mm -hmm. it's all about what you want to do. All the people you surround yourself with, and and Dom Dom Lee surround himself with, you know, with the right people. And I surround myself with the with the right people, and so have these guys, Chris and La La, you know what I mean, Simmons and everybody. You gotta surround yourself with the right people. If you don't surround yourself with the right people, I don't care what you got going on, you know. And if you ain't the leader, if you a follower, that's what's gonna happen. You gonna you gonna you gonna do whatever you gonna do whatever and whatever whatever somebody else wants you to do. That's what you are gonna do, you know. So it's, it's guys like Dominique. When I got to school, that was the guy I wanted to be around. I wanted to be around him. It was like yo, whatever he doing, because obviously, man. That again, like before he even got on the call, I told you to be on the field with. Listen, I've been on the field with Dominique, and we and it was a pass on his weight, and I'm right there, right. He looked at me like, "What you doing over here?" I said, "Man, know what you mean?" He was like, "Hey, man." Don't come over here no more. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. You help, you help him over there. Yeah. I got this. Side. Don't come over here. And I'm like, I, I'm like, I, I ain't never come back to your side. And that, but that's how he was. Like, man, don't help me. I got this. He said, I'm gonna yeah. take, take care of this. You know what I'm saying? So, man, look, man, if you want it, man, go get it, man. Don't matter where you at. But the HBCU, I mean, is man, like Dominique said, man. I, and I bleed. That listen, this right yeah. here. This right. Here. <laughs> This way is that. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie to you. Hey, V. Hey, V. And <laughs> hey, you know what? Find it over, V. So I'm in, I'm in the thing. I'm in 707. Like I said, I'm in the tournament. So you know they got me playing Kona. So we in cover three. So they threw, they ran a post. I'm looking at the free set. He in the post. I said, man, what are you doing? Like, why is you back here? Go go rob something down there. But I got all this back here. <laughs> that's me too, man. Just, but like he said, man. That first part, bro, that, that's, that's, it, it's way easier than people think it is, man. It, the scratches can only describe you if you let it. Like, my mindset was, no matter how much, because I ain't going to lie, I, I, I'm going I'm to hang out now. I'm going to have fun. <laughs> but as much as I have fun, I'm going to get up and work just that hard. You know what I mean? And people always ask me, like, bro, how you be going out? Ooh, ooh, then, like, if you see me out on my Instagram late at night, then vibing, you're going to see me early in the morning, right back on Instagram, right in the weight room, because it's a want to. You either gonna do it or you not gonna do it. You know what I mean? Then nobody ever have to push us. Like I tell people, I tell people, hey, about to trades. I'm gonna be at the hill at five thirty. If you come, you coming. I'm only gonna tell you once. I'm like you. Like I tell my little cousin, he just got drafted. Like when we first started, he didn't have that want to. I had to go in there, wake him up, get him up to come work out. Nah, I ain't doing that no more. Now he begging me, cuz come on, cuz let go work out, let go work out. Cause you gotta have that want to. You gotta have that dog, like Levine said. You gotta have that dog. Like I wanted it. Like you gotta send about it. Like I remember in doing one on ones at practice 
or when we go to scout team, I used to pay the scout team receivers. I'm gonna give you five hundred dollars if you catch a ball with me today. <laughs> you got anybody that ever play with me? I'm gonna give you some money if you catch a ball. Don't come out here last two days ago with me. Oh, I, I ain't never been like that. I always want. I'm always. You can only match my intensity. You'll never outwork me. And I learned that from TSU because guarding them twins and Freddie B and all them boys, man, that's that was tough. And and the one thing that that black college had taught. When we, when we was in school, you had to be about your stuff. You just couldn't come there and just, nah, nah, you, you better have something about yourself. Or we gonna get at you, bro. We gonna get at you. And we gonna let it be known, so. But it was all out of love. It wasn't never no disrespect to nobody. It was all out of love, but you better be about yours, bro. I'm telling you, better tell them, B. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Now you step in that, you step in that field now, and you was talking all that, or they gonna, we gonna see about you. We gonna see about you. Long. We gonna see about you. You, you talked all that. We want to see if you really got what you're talking about. I'm telling you. Nah, it, nah, it, it's really like that. And nah, man, that's um, yeah, man. I, man, I'm even bringing back memories, man. Me want to go out there. Hey, Chris Rowland, I ain't gonna lie to you, boy. You lucky I ain't when that tears you and you and you without. <laughs> man, y'all getting too old, man. Don't stop. I mean, I don't <laughs> see what I'm saying? No, don't get. <laughs> Yo, don't, don't get in trouble on him, man. Look, man you, you know I got to deal with Riley every day, man. He said the same thing you saying. You lucky I was yeah. out there. <laughs> nah, nah, that, that, that how I be, though, bro. I'm telling y'all, boy, be inside me, bro. Even though I don't be there, I promise I catch every game. Every game. I got an update on every game, bro. Hey, man, I, I, used, I used to get on get on the, on the, on the website and, and buy the game. I be in the hotel looking at the game. No, I'm, saying, I'm like, you know, like, man, look, man, I love it, man. I love Tennessee State, man. I love that. So, man, if one, if one for Tennessee State, man, I, I wouldn't be the man I am today. Hey. Because what I had to go through, like Simmons said it earlier, it teaches you life lessons. It teaches you life lessons. Man, you know, I remember we used to stay in the apartments, and uh, nobody had, listen, nobody had no money. Everybody but we all get enough, everybody get to thinking, like, listen, we gotta get some food. You know, and next thing you know, we got food everywhere. It's just like, <laughs> Go get a job or something. You gotta figure it out. You gotta figure it out, and we figure it out together. Like, we'll go out there, we'll go work out, we come back, we hungry, and we figure it out. Like, look, man, we gotta figure it out. Like, like you know, who can we call, who, whatever, whatever. Like, we gotta figure it out. And man, no, those long days, like, nobody wanna go back home in the summertime. <laughs> Y'all you know, ran my plug. Do whatever you plug in the Man, they had to run us away from them. I remember mean, yeah, one time eight. I told Kareed I stayed in the hole. Oh, yeah, they had to put y'all out the hole, man. I remember that. I mean, they had to put us out. We told them we ain't going home. We stayed up there the whole summer. And we was, we was, we'll work out that morning at six o'clock. And then, bam, like they'll, they'll have us plugged in on the job, like at two men in the truck or something like that. We'll work the whole day. And then we'll end up going back and doing some extra work on the field later and then doing the same thing over the next day. Yep. Every day. Don't get old. <laughs> you got to find it. <laughs> find it. <laughs> right, right. And we have another question. It says uh, we have some coaches on here. Is there any advice to coaches trying to cha train the next generation of uh, of football players or to get to the, to the NFL? What is it maybe some of the things that you guys are seeing now that you've going through your journeys that you think besides we talked about the one two but what do you some of the things you think that that coaches need to focus on for the players to to help push them to the next level um you know that that you think is maybe missing a lot of times or times sometimes people don't get until later in the game i think coaches nowadays need to take more time of teaching players the game because you know i you know i'm not trying to take anything away from you know any of my coaches or anything but you know, there's a lot of football that I didn't know coming into rookie means that, you know, I didn't, to be honest with you, I was out there like, you know, I was out there just playing, but I didn't really know how to diagnose coverages really at all until, you know, I got into some of my rookie means and learning what, you know, cover three match, cover three man is zone. I, I didn't know. And, you know, I feel like that's the part that, you know, will help, you know, players that are going to HBCUs. Cause you know, like I said, they already look at us, you know, most, like, I'm going to be honest with you, they look at us like we dumb. So, you know, being a smarter player is something that I think needs to be taught more for players that are going to HBCUs, just have a better understanding of the game and stuff like that. So, you know, I would take more time into really sitting down and learning the game instead of going out to play. Because anybody can play it, but the smartest man going to stay around and play. So, 
coming from offensive line, I would have to say, like, just knowing the whole concept of the play. Like, just better – like, if you if you know the concept of the play, you're going to get your job done. And, like, it just makes it easier. Like, a lot – like, my coach at uh, the Bears right now, he called me the professor because he was like, man, the professor pig, no, he know every – like, every answer, like, every – like, no, everything. Right. Professor so, Pig. Man, I'm telling man, everybody up there called me Pig. Like nobody called me the Chavis or the like everybody. And like it's just it's just a grind, man. You just gotta have and just instill the mindset into the guys like Coach Harris, like he was always tell us like is you said your body you say you don't want to do stuff, but it's it's your mind. Your mind your mind is a powerful thing. And if you tell your mind, oh it's too hot out here, you're gonna be hot. And you just gotta, you just gotta change your mindset and just find it. What you say it's like, man? It's like what? It ain't, it ain't in you. What is it? What do you say? Yeah, it, it like ragu, you gotta be in you. You <laughs> gotta be in. Ten. Know, like people just talking about the drip, man. Hey, it's in you, not on you. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Got you. Got you. And uh, we had a, we had a, a comment that says it's true. It's not about where you go to school. It's about what you do with the school you're at. Um. When you guys, um, when you guys in the league and you're in the locker rooms and you meet some of these other guys from HBCUs, whether who are already there or not, do you guys kind of? Is there any of a? Is, is there like a? Is there like a maybe something of a? At least some common ground that you guys find with them. You know, obviously you guys out there competing on on the field and things like that. But you know, once you everybody has their spots, are you? Is there common ground between some of the HBCU guys out there? And what, what's just the relationship like for a lot of us out there who don't know? Yeah, it's, it's like what Dominique said earlier. When you somebody that, that come from a, another HBCU, you you automatically understand. You know, like, well, I know what you've been through, boy. I've been through the same thing. Like, I, I already know, you know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 it's immediately like a, 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 a respect factor because, uh, again, you know, that person uh, had to go through to get to where he at, you know? So, uh, so it, it's immediately a, a respect factor. And, um, yeah, it's, it's love, and then after that, uh, you know, it's it's time to compete. But, but um, not straight. Uh, it, it it it's definitely love. Um, but then it's after you get to that part, yeah, it's it's time to get it's, it's time to get at, get active. Yeah, man, I ain't gonna lie. The first thing I do is, I, I uh, when we get the little, damn, what that shit called, bro? Damn, with the roster. Yeah, we get Scott the roster. report. I, that report. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When we get a little roster, the first thing I do is look on that roster, and I'm looking for number black college players. Because the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go straight to them, and I'm going to say, what's up to them, man? And it's so many times I done walked up to God, they're like, man, I wouldn't even think you would know who I am. I'm like, man, you're crazy, but I know every black college player on every team, boy. And I'm going to trade jerseys, which I, I don't care who on that team, I'm going to always go to the black college player and try to trade their jerseys before I trade with anybody else. I'm telling you, man, I, I love black college, bro. I'm always looking for anybody that went to an HBCU. But... Even in the jersey, if I'm on your sideline, I'm selling out. If I make a play by your sideline, I'm gonna say, Hey, but tell them what it's ABCU shit, ain't it? I'm telling you. Hey, hey I'm gonna play. I remember we played the Giants. We played the Giants, and he was on our sideline. And he was, he was talking, he was talking to me doing the play. Doing the play. And then he almost picked it, he almost got the interception, and he turned back and said, Hey, B, you see me, right? I said, Why well, see you, boy? <laughs> Yeah. Bean, Bean, Bean put me in a hard spot one time, Bean. Nah, 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 nah. I'm glad you brought that up. I almost forgot about that. Man, yeah, man. Look, so look, we playing, we playing, we playing the Broncos, right? I run down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I go down up, you feel me? And uh, I, I make a play, and then one of their players like push me. And he put me so I get at it. So now me and him going there, so now they players, Coming at me, so I'm pushing on. You know, we going at it. We, you know, we going at. Next thing you know, I feel somebody grab me. So somebody grab me. I'm like, man, let me go. Let me go. And I turn around, and it's him. And he got me like this while his teammates trying to get at me. And I'm like, bro, what you doing? Why you grabbing me? Like, why you got me and your teammates trying to get at me? I said, well, I'm telling Coach Reed, boy, you gonna help them before you help me. Yeah, he done that. I can't believe that. Uh, man, I was trying to get you off because I knew, I knew if y'all really got the stuff, but I'm going to have to whoop, whoop, bro. And I'm like, man, dang, I got to stop me before you get there, man. Hey, I'm t- man, I was so mad, Dominique. 
I was mad down the street, man. But we still swap jerseys after the game, though. Yeah, I got those same jersey, man. Shit, I can't help it out of being on 17. You got to buy same jersey. I got those same jersey, same color, man. I ain't, I ain't trade with you no more. Y'all swap every game, man. Every time y'all oh, yeah, play. Yeah, every, every time every we, we swap jerseys. <laughs> I got, I got, I got So you got, I told y'all, man, I need, I need one of each. Since y'all got some to spare, go ahead. Yes, sir. Man, lying. <laughs> he said, you mean I'm not swapping jersey with you no more, man. I keep getting your same jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Well, look, uh, I think we're getting close to the close to the end here, so we're gonna wrap it up. But I really want to appreciate uh, all you gentlemen for giving uh, your time and energy to this, talking about um, HBCUs, TSU specifically, um, and making it to the NFL. All you gentlemen are not only living out your dreams, but you know you're also inspiring to a lot of other folks who are coming after you guys. So. Um, just, you know, really quick, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of folks who are watching this, maybe some potential uh, prospects uh, coming up behind you guys. And uh, if you all, you know, maybe just give why you think, why you think the HBCUs should be considered by guys who have offers from other guys, uh, other schools. Um, if you can give us just, you know, what you think of your thoughts on that or, or what you would say to them and then go from there. Man, at the end of the day, you're going to hear this a lot. Football is football. Mm -hmm. And like you said, like, man, look, you can have, man, you can have all that stuff, but it's, it's different when you come from HBCU. It's more humbling. And like you said, it's going to make you a man. And that's something I, I'm not, the experience I wouldn't trade for anything in the world, having all those, having all the, you know, that luxury stuff. You know, you don't need that stuff. You don't need it now because the hard work starts now. You know what I'm saying? So, that would be what I'd have to say to the next generation if they, you know, got power five offers or you consider an HBCU. Hey. At the end of the day, if you can ball, they're going to find you. <laughs> Point blank period. If you can play ball, they're going to find you. And and they running through them HBCUs every day. Like we see my whole four years, you seeing scouts coming through there every day. Like, it's, it's different teams. Like, uh, my whole senior year, like, I was up in the office just about every day they'll call me, oh, this team want to meet you, or this team want to meet you. Like, hey, who you can play. Who right now? Huh? <laughs> LRV. I walked past the room here, two scouts. Who you meet with now? <laughs> Man, if you can play, they're going to find you. Straight up. And it means something. That's mm -hmm. – it's, it's different, man. I tell you, it means something. I don't even know how to, it's hard to explain it. Maybe the, you know, the old heads, they put in the, you know, put in the words, but it's. Not with the old heads. Oh, <laughs> my bad, oh, my bad. I, talking to us, I thought you were talking to somebody else. Hey, no. <laughs> hey man, the vets, the vets, we probably put it in the words, man, but it, it just means so much more. And it's, it's you know, when I'm saying this, it was much passion as I can. And, yeah. you know, I don't know how to explain it, but, you know, I don't think it means as much to another guy coming from a PWI the same as it means to me coming from an HBCU, just how hard it was. And just, there's her, I ain't gonna lie, man, there's, there's road bumps all the way, all the way through. There's gonna be potholes, but in these potholes, man, there's a spring to spring you forward. And, you know, there's nothing that can prepare you for, you know, what, like, you know, like HBCU can for what's to, what's to come ahead. So, you know, maybe being a, you know, Dominic can put in the words what I'm trying to say. Hey, boy, you done that at Tennessee State, boy? <laughs> You learn what? You learn what you just said at Tennessee State. That's good right there, man. Look at you. This <laughs> is education. Hey, man, hey, it's top notch. Hey, nah, man, look, man, all I'm going to say, man, is that, man, look, at the end of the day, you know, uh, I personally, you know, I, I, I love my HBCU experience. You know, it, it, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Now, at, at the end of the day, man, as long as you go to school, that, that that's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, Man, mate, listen, we, we talked about football a lot on, on, on this call, but at the end of the day, you can't go you can't go to college if you ain't got your grades right. You understand? So uh you gotta you gotta make sure you get your grades right, man. And, and whatever school you pick, you pick. You know, just, just stay focused. You know, and uh and being and playing football, you know, all, all of us play football, you know, and you know, it, it's all about what you find as success. You know, uh, us playing football don't don't make us successful. You know, uh if you don't play football, that don't mean you're not successful. So um, don't don't think about it like man if I if I don't make it playing football I'm not I'm not successful. That that's definitely that that's not true because uh Dominique 
uh, made it, right? He, he first round draft pick. Now Dominique, one of Dominique's close friends is his financial advisor. He don't play football, but he's successful. He's, he's his financial advisor. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, just, just because you don't play football, that don't, mean, that don't make you not successful. And um, I'm out of school. You wanna, you, what, what, what you want to do is, you want, you want to make wh whoever take care of you now, man, you, you, want, you want to make them proud, uh, no matter what you do. You understand? So how you make them proud, you make them proud by being successful. By, by going to school, by graduating, by, by getting a good job, no matter, no matter what that is, because right now, they going to work to provide for you so you can go on and have a better future than, than, what, than what they had, you understand? So, um, man, at the end of the day, man, it, it doesn't matter where you go to school at, as long as you keep your, your grades right. And, uh, and Dominique, man, you can go ahead and say something close up. Man, I just say, y'all pretty much said it, man. It don't, it don't matter where you at, ball is ball. You know, but uh, that HBU, HBCU experience is something different, though, man. Then you don't been in locker rooms. You've seen guys from Florida, Florida State, LSU. If, if you ever look at guys that, that went to them big schools in the locker room and, and see how they buy with each other versus a guy that went to an HBCU, it's totally different, man. It's totally, it's all, I'm talking about it, it. You can tell the genuineness, the love, the, the appreciation is it, for real. You know, I say that that's the one, the best thing about an HBCU, man, is it's real genuine love. But I don't, I mean, Coach Reed get me all the time. Hey, man, I need you to talk to this player, that player. He say, hype me up. I, I say, Coach, he'll tell you, I ain't going to hype you up. Man. I ain't going to hype up to you. you know, I, I can't do that. I'm going to tell the player, man, hey, whatever you decide, bro, just be focused on you, bro, whatever best for you, bro. But understand when you go there, it's gonna be hard, and I just gotta get, gotta get the real. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, like you said, football is football. You can't tell a man what, what to do and where to go. All you can do is tell him that, hey, what you, your experience and what you got from there. And, and if, if they buy with it, they buy with it. You know what I mean? So that's it with that HBCU thing. All right, all right. Well, look, appreciate you guys so much for hopping on, giving us of your time, and talking uh, freely from your hearts, and, uh, and and giving us some really great stuff. So. Um, we're going to make sure this uh, interview goes up on our YouTube at HBCU Game Day. Um, so make sure you guys all follow, subscribe to that. And uh, guys, continue to do what you're doing. Uh, best of luck to you guys uh, in this uh, in this this twenty this 2020, this COVID-19. Hope you guys all stay healthy and stay happy and uh, and get to go out there and uh, and, and, and and just keep living <laughs> and doing what you want to do. Oh, what was that? Hey, oh, I mean, yeah. I'll pay you for that, man. Oh, oh that's right. There is it. Is that, yes, the, is that the ICS is that the ICS TSU jersey? That, that's, yeah, we need those back, man. Yes, sir. Oh, that's yeah. Oh, you like I ain't got my. <laughs> oh, you like my jersey upstairs. Oh, I don't feel like I'm upstairs. <laughs> the, the jersey combo is a whole is a whole another thing, but we we'll definitely have to do with that the next time. So I appreciate you guys so much, and uh, take care. And uh, remember to follow all of these guys. Uh, they're doing great things on and off the field and in the community. So I appreciate you guys so much. Ready to get it. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Is, he, is he going to get it? Oh, yeah. oh man, that's sweet. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, we... <laughs> Damn, okay. Man. Yo, hey, wild crazy, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, crazy. that's the wall of fame. Hold on, hold on. Huh? He got me messed up. Hold on. <laughs> Crow guy, go ahead and run out there. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, there it is. Hey, yeah. Uh, okay. Hold on, hey, 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 let's go. Let's go. Hey, hey, it's time to go. He trying to show us. He trying to show off his jersey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got the red one. The, the oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh, yeah, that's a hey, special edition? Yeah, that's the fam. You classic right there, baby. Oh, OK. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. TS, oh, man. We got to do a whole TSU jersey show next time. <laughs> uh, but that, 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 